Hello, my name is Michael Gaucher, and in the year 2000, I worked at an internet startup where my job title was Chief Web Developer. I was in charge of a web development team, and this team would build websites for um, local governments, uh, municipalities, uh, doing things such as um, putting up websites to uh, pay traffic tickets, pay utility bills, and we did the front end work and we did that in collaboration with a team out of Atlanta who did the back end work, the middleware. And so this was e-commerce and e-commerce was huge at that time. The tool that I used, uh, one of the principal tools that I used was Visual Interdev, Visual Interdev. And I used that in conjunction with Visual Basic. And of course, uh, with the description of those tools, the web framework language that I used was ASP, ActiveX Server, Server Pages, ActiveX Server Pages, called ASP for short. Uh, conceptually, it's a uh, forerunner to what we now call ASP.NET. And Visual Interdev, the combination of Visual Interdev, Visual Basic, Visual C++, and Visual Fox Pro, and so on. You see a pattern here, visual, as the prefix to the name of these tools, right? But these tools were from Microsoft, and so these were precursors to what you would call uh, Visual Studio. Um, so, in a way, I've been using Visual Studio for a very long time in its um, earlier incarnations, as well as what um, developed since then. The tool that would be called Visual Studio, I wouldn't use until sometime in the year uh, 2001. And I started learning about um, C Sharp and Visual Basic.net uh, sometime around October 2000. I was already uh, doing work for companies using the Microsoft tool set. And it was a natural progression for me, although I was considering Java at the time, it was a natural progression for me given the customers and clients that I had at the time to uh, learn what was coming next with Microsoft tools. And so I became one of the first .NET uh, programmers, developers, one of the, the, the earlier adopters of .NET. Um, and so um, I, I hit the ground running with .NET when it was initially released in January 2002. Sometime later, much later, I became curious about Linux. I worked with Linux three times. The first was in the 1990s, and my interest in Linux then was web hosting, not software development. It was web hosting. And so I had gotten a copy of Red Hat Linux. Um, you could buy a book in a bookstore, and it would have a CD on it, and it would have a copy of Red Hat Linux. And so I installed it on a computer and uh, played around with it. and. Um, Worked with it long enough to uh, see that at that time that was not for me. My first exposure to software development was in a command line environment. And so Microsoft DOS and Microsoft Basic and using the Microsoft Basic editor in DOS um, and then running programs in that um, in that DOS prompt, they, they, you would call it a DOS prompt, but it's a command line. And doing that, you know, that was very instructional. But after visual tools um, became the, the thing, I switched to that and I, um, you know, stayed with that for quite some time. And so my first foray into Linux was the 90s and then I, touched Linux again around 2004. It was a spinoff company um, that 
you know, was part of the uh, major company that I had worked worked with, and they had they was doing this spinoff company where they was going to use Linux as their exclusive technology, and so that was my second foray into Linux, and that involved Linux servers, clusters, a a huge Linux footprint, and the team lead at that time wanted to use Dell Latitude laptops and decided to install Red Hat Linux on those laptops. The Wi-Fi drivers were non-existent and so this individual took us through an exercise of compiling a Wi-Fi driver for, for Red Hat Linux running on a Dell, on Dell Latitude laptops. And we did it as a team exercise. And that was very interesting. And so I did that for a while, and then I continued my uh, career with uh, Microsoft Technologies in the next company after that. And I wouldn't touch Linux again in a major way until either late 2007, definitely late 2008. And I had decided at that time that after doing some experiments with the Mono framework, um, Miguel de Acaza, he created this uh, framework called Mono, which was a, a replica, a, a recreation of .NET, Microsoft.NET in a Linux environment. So I'd say, cool, let's try this out with ASP.NET. And it worked. And I was interested in that because Linux servers are inexpensive. And so if I could use the same Microsoft skills in a Linux environment, that would allow me to um, hit the ground running um, in a Linux environment with the programming tool set of choice for me based on my experience and based on my level investment in Microsoft technology. And so I tried out Ubuntu and I had heard various things about Ubuntu. And it just so happened that in early 2009, I switched permanently to Ubuntu. I still kept Windows around, but I like the idea of the flexibility, the flexibility of Ubuntu. I hadn't bought into open source or free software at that time or any of that. All I knew was same computer, newer, fresher operating system, more up to date, more stable. They say it's more secure. Let's give that a try. And it was easy to use. And so I used Ubuntu for several years in my private life. I did not use Linux professionally this third time around, right? I was attempting to use it professionally in the 1990s but I really didn't have to run my own Linux servers. I used third-party hosting sites, and so they did all the Linux administration. And then I tried it again in uh, 2005. Well, it was actually uh, imposed, but the transition there wasn't too bad. Um, I just simply um, improved my bash shell scripting skills, my understanding of Linux concepts, and really deep dived in that and was pretty uh, well off in that environment. And then I looked at it again in 2007, 2008 to run my own, uh, my own web applications in a Linux environment. So by my count, that's three times. And then the fourth time again was in um, early 2009 where that was a permanent switch in my private uh, computers, in my private uh, use of, of uh, computer operating systems. And so then I was going to um, use Linux as a research uh, ground, as, as the ground for research. 
And it wasn't until around 2012 that I began to pursue research into software development in a Linux environment more in earnest. And that's when I made my switch from C sharp to C++ in my private, my private use of computers. Professionally, in my day job, I had a consistent uh, track record um, of using Microsoft technologies, aside for that one time that I was in that spinoff company, as I mentioned earlier. And so my perspective on open source and software technologies transformed, it evolved, where I began to see the benefit of open source as a concept, as a philosophy of free software, as espoused by Richard Stallman, as a concept, as a way of looking at software and systems and their relationship to society. And that coincided with a new objective for me, which was I wanted to do what the Java developers would do right once run anywhere. But I wanted to do that with native, native code. And I had various reasons for doing that, but I saw a my main reason for that was I saw the track record of native programs written in C and C++. By my accounting, at that time, around 2012, I saw a, a stronger legacy, a stronger heritage and foundation in the C and C++ arena when it came to programs that had longevity and that were more versatile in the environments in which they they can migrate into. So you may have a very well written C and or C++ program that was written in BSD written in Unix and it could make its way into Linux, and then it can make its way into Mac OS, and then it can make its way into Microsoft Windows. I did not see the reverse course when it came to programs that were written in a Microsoft environment. And so that was very appealing to me because when it comes to programs, programs that I get from other people, or programs that I put out, I want a couple of things. I want quality, first and foremost, quality. And I also want longevity. That is to say, I really don't want to go through frequent versions, frequent turnover of the program, frequent rewrites of the program, especially when I'm involved with that, right? I want to design something that is built to last. And so I pursued those, those trains of thought in a Linux, C++, open source, cross-platform context. And so that's how I bought into open source, free software, Linux, C++, and the other tools and technologies that um, are associated with that. And so here lately, I had a thought. I said, with all of this experience I have in Microsoft.NET, C Sharp, SQL Server, and I have a Windows machine, what would it look like to take the same program that I wrote in Linux that I spent approximately five to seven years on? And I recreated that program in Microsoft Windows. And I did it on a 
quote unquote low end computer? What would that look like? And so that's what I went to find out. And the next set of videos covers uh, that process from beginning to end.